fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. The Lone Ranger and Toto, riding to Indian territory where danger threatened the new settlers there, were passing through the turbulent mining town of Goldville. The Lone Ranger, without his mask and dressed in cowboy attire, stopped with Toto. They dismounted and stood at the rear of an angry mob that milled around the sheriff's office. The Lone Ranger was gravely concerned as he watched a few hard-looking men who moved through the crowd, intent, it seemed, on spurring the others to violence. Worst things! Bring out the bank! Will you string him up? Hand him over, Sheriff! You can't take him away from here! Let's take over, boys! Come on! Come on. Sheriff Tom Daggett and his two deputies, Pete Bronson and Jim Wells, stepped from the office onto the porch and faced the muttering crowd. Daggett's hands hung loosely near his two gun holsters, and his icy calmness as he eyed the mob stopped its forward movement as if he had placed a barrier in front of himself. He remained silent for a long moment as the shouting increased, and then as suddenly waned. Hey, hand over Banks to a sheriff! He's one murderer we aim to put on the end of a rope! All right! Now wait, all of you! I want you to listen to me! I said I want you to listen to me, and you're gonna... Any of you want to talk, come up here where I can see and hear you. Don't be skulking down there in the crowd. Well, anyone want to talk? All right, then listen. Keep still, you men. Let's hear what the sheriff has to say. Hey, quiet down, boys. Go ahead, Tom. We got a prisoner here, Bill Bangs. He's being held for murder, and I mean held. No mob is going to take any prisoner out of the jailhouse while I'm sheriff. Anybody care to try it? Then get! The mob gradually melted before the fierceness of Sheriff Daggett's gaze. The two or three men who had been trying to arouse the crowd looked angry. The Lone Ranger watched them for a while and then saw them enter a cafe called Floyd Hatton's Golden Nugget. The Lone Ranger turned to Toto. Toto, those men bear watching. I think we'll stay here a while. Oh, we... Not go to Indian territory? Not until we learn more about Phil Bangs and the circumstances surrounding his arrest. I've heard of the man in the past. His reputation was good. I can't believe he's a murderer. Me think same thing. So while I'm dressed like this, I'll move around town for a while. Try to find out what this is all about. 
In less than an hour, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were alone together once more, having meanwhile learned what was to be known about Phil Bang's arrest. They say that he and his partner, Kenny, found a new mine in some far-off place up in the hills. Ah. Kenny come to town, drink, heap much. Say mine, very rich. Yes, I heard that too. He was in the Golden Nugget Cafe drinking hard while he waited for the stagecoach to Central City. After a while, they say he was in a befuddled condition. He bragged about the mine and was telling everyone about the map he carried. The one he was going to use to file his claim, I imagine. But him not file claim? No, he never got to Central City where he'd have to go to do it. He disappeared without taking the stagecoach. When they found him yesterday, he was dead with Phil Bang's empty revolver near his body. But why Bang's kill him? I don't know, nor does the sheriff. Bang's denies he did. There are two men who say they saw Bang shoot his partner. It's on their say so that he's being held. That and the fact they found his revolver nearby. Ah. Why they make map and tear it up, tear it in half? Bang says they feared foul play, that miners have been killed lately before they could file claims. They were afraid it might happen to them. So they drew a map of their mine, and each was going to give his half to someone near to him. In the event, they were prevented from filing their claim. Bangs filed claim when partner died? No, Sheriff Daggett arrested him before he had a chance. Bangs is suspicious, says the sheriff is conspiring against him, and refuses to tell where the mine is located. Kimosabe. Yes? Look across the street. Toto directed the Lone Ranger's attention to the two men emerging from the Gold Nugget Cafe, the men who had led the mob a short time before. Otto, those men must have a reason for trying to get Phil Bangs lynched. I'm going back to camp and change these clothes. You stay here and keep an eye on those fellas. See where they go and what they do. I'll be waiting at camp. Sheriff Daggett was concerned about the attempted lynching. Later that day, he spoke to his deputies, Pete Bronson and Jim Wells. Good boys. Seems to me that Raj Perry and Frisco Comita were the leaders of that mob this afternoon. It sure yeah, looks like it, Sheriff. They're the witnesses against Bangs, and I don't like their attitude. That's why you two are going to take Bangs over to Central City and lodge him in the jail there. And do it quietly. Nobody will know we're taking Bangs away. All right, Sheriff. But someone did know. Raj Perry, who had been in the Golden Nugget Cafe earlier, had sneaked around to the rear of the Sheriff's building. The building was poorly constructed, and the walls were made of thin boards loosely joined. As Perry listened outside a window, he heard all that had been said. What he did not know as he hurried back to the Golden Nugget Cafe was that Toto had been watching his every movement. Floyd Hatton, owner of the Golden Nugget, was in his office talking to Frisco Kamita when Raj Perry entered hurriedly. Hey, boss. Daggett has his deputies, Bronson and Wells, taking Bangs over the Who's Gow in Central City tonight. What? I heard him give them orders, boss. He says Bangs will be safe from the mob there. He said that, huh? Yeah. All right, we'll take Bangs before he gets to Central City. I'll go by horseback? Yeah, by the main road, after the first mile or so. Boss, we make ambush. Yeah, Frisco. Raj, you and Frisco get on the hill trail that overlooks the main road at Elbow Bend. Well, that's a good spot for an ambush, boss, but... The house where Mrs. Bangs is staying is less than a mile from there. Who cares? You two take Fuzzy Willard with you and ride to Elbow Bend now. But they're not taking Bangs away till nightfall. You'll go now. That's an owner will see you leave town later. The sheriff won't be suspicious then. And mind you, don't kill Phil Bangs. Kill the deputies, but keep him alive. You still want that, boss? Certainly. If the mob had taken him this afternoon as we planned, we'd have rescued him, hit him away, and then gone to work on him till he told us where the mine was. Or until we got the other half of the map. Oh, too bad we have to kill this hombre, Jeb Kenny. If he had told us where the mine was, we would not have to do all this. But he didn't tell us. When I spiked his drink and got him out of the cafe, he wasn't able to talk. Later, when we questioned him, he wouldn't talk. And when he tried to escape, we had to shoot him. You think Bang's wife, she maybe have other half of map? Either that or she has an idea where it may be. Bangs doesn't talk to us, and we'll go to her. We'll prove that we have Bangs hidden. We'll promise to keep him alive only if she tells us where his half of the map is. Good. We get fuzzy then, set out for Elbow Ben. Come on, Frisco. Easy. A short time later, the three henchmen of Floyd Hatton rode out of Goldville by one route, then doubled back around the town and galloped along the main trail until they came to Elbow Bend. 
There they got at their horses up to a trail overlooking the main road and dismounted. Oh, oh. The Indian, who unknown to them, had followed at a distance, watched from the thicket for a while. Then he walked his horse away from the scene, and once out of earshot, urged it into a gallop. Get him up, scout! Tonto, back at camp, told the Lone Ranger of what he had witnessed. And now, three men wait a trail over El Boben. You no idea what they may be up to? No, Kimasabi. Me not hear what them say in cafe. But they rode off after leaving Hatton's office, huh? Ah. Perhaps it has nothing to do with what happened this afternoon, but I'm still suspicious of those men. Ah. The way them ride back of town, not look good. No, Toto. So let's find out what they're up to. Easy, Easy, Scott. Scott. Easy, Fanner. We ride up into the hills above Elbow Bend to a spot higher in the trail where you say they're waiting. We go now, Kimasabi? Yes. Montilla! Come up, Scott. Deputies Brunson and Wells led Phil Bangs from the rear door of the Goldville Jail with no one seeing them. Less than an hour later, they were on the main road to Central City, nearing the wide turn known as Elbow Bend. On the trail a short distance above the road at the bend, Rog Perry peered through the thicket down onto the moon-bathed path below. Suddenly, he turned and ran back to where Frisco Kamita and Fuzzy Willard waited by their horses. All right, boys. I see them. Huh? Just the three. They'll be at the bend in a minute or so. So get ready. Phil Bangs had remained silent from the time he had left the jailhouse, riding between deputies Bronson and Wells. The two lawmen kept their eyes straight ahead on the road, less alert now than when they started on their journey. Bangs was the first one to hear and see the three men ride down from the trail above. Look! Riding down here. Bronson, there! Be there, push this again. Why, the dirty... No! Pete, I'm hit! As Jim Wells fell to the road, the three crooks concentrated their fire on Deputy Pete Bronson. Bronson, firing back, caught Rog Perry with his first shot, and the man slumped from his saddle. But another bullet finished the deputy at the moment that Phil Bang's horse fell to the ground. The elderly prisoner, seeking shelter behind the fallen animal, used his manacled wrists as a vice and grasped the gun from Bronson's lifeless hand. You varmint, you'll not kill me! Frisco Kamita, obeying orders, had not fired at the prisoner. But now, too late, he saw his mistake. As he rode in on the man, Bangs, using the index fingers of both hands, fired. Now here's one for you. As Frisco fell, Bangs rose from behind the horse, but Fuzzy Willard fired at that instant. The elderly man hit, fell backward. And at the same moment, Willard saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding down the embankment from the trail above. He spurred his horse and was off like the wind towards town. One of the Lone Ranger's bullets nicked the man's shoulder before he disappeared around the bend, and the masked man rode onto the scene. Tonto was immediately behind him. Oh, oh, he's killing me, fella. Stay there. Keep us up We chase other fella. He's hit, Tonto. He's headed toward town. We'll attend to him later. Right now, we have five men here, dead and wounded. Let's see who they are and how they are. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto rendered expert first aid. Only the prisoner, Phil Bangs, was conscious, though he too was wounded and in great pain. Bangs, you'll have to go back to jail. These men tried to free you. No, no, they want to kill me. Them same men who lead mob today. That's true. That's why we follow them here. But why should they... Tonto, of course. You said this dead man was the one who stood outside the sheriff's office today listening at the door. Ah, him same fella. He must have heard them say they were going to take Bangs along this road. They were taking me to Central City for safety. I see. Yes, that explains this ambush. But why? I know why. You know why they want to kill you? These men, I mean? Yes. They're with Floyd Hatton today. Has he anything to do with it? I'm not sure. Maybe. Please take me home. Not far from here. It's half a mile. I'll see my wife before I die. You won't die, Bangs. I've stopped the flow of blood. You'll be all right. Lie still a moment. Toto. Uh-uh. Taking these wounded men to town on horseback might prove fatal to them. Suppose we put them and Bangs across the saddles of our horses and another. We'll walk them to Bangs' house, and you can ride into town for a doctor and the sheriff. The masked man and the Indian leading three horses arrived at the isolated home of Phil Bangs a little later. Oh, oh there. Yeah. Oh, I'll go inside and prepare Mrs. Bangs for this. Then we'll carry the men inside. Mrs. Bangs was hysterical at first, but recovered her composure after a short while. She seemed frightened by the masked man when he entered. But after he and Toto bandaged and attended her husband and the two unconscious men, she realized she had no reason to fear them. Standing by her husband, she spoke to the Lone Ranger. Mr. Phil didn't kill Jeb Kenny. I believe that. You, you do, stranger? Yes. I'm going to help you if it's possible. I arrived here only this afternoon, and I heard part of the story about your being arrested for Kenny's murder. I'd like to hear your side. Well, Phil, sorry. I'll tell the man. You keep quiet unless I tell it wrong, all right? All right, Katie. Katie Bangs told how her husband and his partner had found a rich vein of gold in a spot where few men had ever traveled. They made a map of the location and returned to Bangs' home. There, they decided to tear the map, each retaining a half. Jeb started drinking, sort of celebrating his good luck. He never got the stagecoach to Central City. He was due back yesterday morning. He never came. He'd been killed the night before. So they say. Phil started to worry when Jeb didn't show up. So he gave me his half of the map to hide while he went to town to look for Jeb. Oh, I told him not to go, but he did. I never got there. Sheriff Daggett and his men arrested him on the road. They were on their way here when they met Phil riding in. They didn't give me a chance to talk even. They found Jeb's body that morning with Phil's pistol just a few feet from it. I loaned my pistol to Jeb before he went to town. He didn't have one. I told the sheriff that. He didn't believe you? No. Those two fellas, Perry and Kamita, they said they saw Phil kill Jeb, swore it on a Bible and said he did it in cold blood. I was here all the time, night before last. The sheriff didn't believe that either? No. He told me he was going on the evidence he had on hand and the witnesses. Said if we had a story, we could tell it at the trial and could produce our proof then. He said I killed Jeb because I wanted the mine all to myself. And ask me where it was located. You didn't tell him? I'm not telling anybody. Not till I walk into the claim office in Central City and file it. I see. What about Kenny's half of the map? He may have mailed it to his daughter. I don't know. All I know is it wasn't on him when they found him. The sheriff says so. So that's the picture. Mrs. Bangs, right now I'm going to town for the doctor. Toto will remain here and look after all of you. While I'm in town, I'm going to do some investigating on my own. The Lone Ranger in Goldville a short time later wrote a note to the doctor. Then he placed it under the doctor's door. Knocked loudly on the panel and retired into the shadows. Seconds later, the doctor opened the door, looked around, then picked up the note. Within a matter of minutes, the doctor galloped off on the main trail. Get up there. Come on. Get up. The Lone Ranger turned and walked to Sheriff Daggett's office, going to the rear door. Sheriff Daggett was preparing to leave his office for the night. When he heard the rear door of his office close softly, he turned quickly to face a masked man who held a gun pointed at him. What's the idea? Who are you? A man who admires your courage and integrity, Sheriff. A friend. A friend? Wearing a mask and holding a gun like that? The gun was merely a precaution, Sheriff. I'll put it away and hold a silver bullet instead. There. Well, you say that is a silver bullet you're holding. 
What does it mean? If I tell you I have a white horse, a great white horse named Silver, and that my best friend is an Indian named Toto, I... You won't have to tell me any more, stranger. Now that I see you, I recognize who you are. You're the Lone Ranger. I know it. What brings you here? Your deputy, Pete Bronson, has been killed, Sheriff. What? And Jim Wells is badly wounded. Bronson dead? Oh, no. Yes, there are other dead and other wounded, too. Listen. The Lone Ranger told the story of the events at Elbow Bend and what he and Toto had done. Sheriff, it's strange that the witnesses against Bangs should be the men who killed your deputy and tried to kill another one and perhaps Bangs, too. Yes, I realize that. What did you learn about Jeb Kenny's last hours around here? Nothing. I've tried to learn, but no one saw him. Last time anyone saw him was last week when he was in Floyd Hatton's cafe celebrating, drinking up all the red eye in the place. Hatton's. Yes, that settles it. That's where the answer to everything lies. Yeah, what do you mean? Once more, the Lone Ranger explained, this time about Tonto's following Rog Perry to Hatton's office and how Perry and two other men rode to Elbow Bend after that. Then the masked man followed with a brief outline of the story told him by Phil and Katie Bangs. The sheriff's eyes narrowed. Well, I'll be... I never thought of Hatton, though I should have. He owns more mining property than all the prospectors in this section. How did he get it? Well, he said it was in repayment for grub stakes. Oh. But, stranger, I see what you have in mind. Then the Lone Ranger outlined a plan. When he finished, Sheriff Daggett smiled. Go ahead, stranger. When you ride out of town, don't bother to look over your shoulder to see if you're followed. I'll have my men close to anyone who decides to trail you. Thanks and good luck. Floyd Hatton had closed the door to his office when the wounded Fuzzy Willard had come to his office a short time before. Willard explained his delay in reporting the incidents at Elbow Bend. You know, it's bleeding bad. So I went to the doctor and had him fix up my shoulder. It's not so bad now. Who cares? So that coyote Bangs killed Frisco, did he? Yeah. Pulled up and shot him before I got him first. Who were the two who rode down on you? Well, I don't know. One of them, the fellow in front, seemed to be wearing a mask. Here you are. Hey, you. Stop right there, Hatton. You're covered. How did you get in? That rear door. I heard a few things you were saying. Hatton Bangs isn't dead. Huh? He isn't, but... You I... winged him, but didn't kill him. You were one of the two who came after Fuzzy here? Yes. Hatton, I'll not waste time. I want Jeb Kenny's half of the map. You want... How did you know... Th I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you'd better, because I have Phil Bangs' half. If Bangs lives, my half won't be any good. Only he knows where the mine is. Yours won't be any good either. It sounds interesting, this stuff about mines, but I don't understand. Then I'll tell you more. We'll get rid of Bangs together. With him out of the picture, we could share that mine. I know the truth about Kenny. You either share your half of the map with me you or... You say you have half a map? Yes, but it don't look like that. It's not here. I won't produce it till your half shows. Where is it? I have no half a map. Then I'll tear up mine and turn Bangs over to the law and give him a chance to file his claim on the property. Good night, Hatton. Hey, boss, you shouldn't have let him go. If he has that other half then of the map... Then I'm going to get it. Fuzzy, never mind that arm of yours. We're going after the masked man. We'll yeah. find out where he has that map and bangs. Hurry before he gets out of town. The Lone Ranger wanted Hatton to follow him in order to carry out the plan he had in mind. He left town slowly. He was on the main road when he glanced over his shoulder and saw the horseman following him. He smiled to himself and sent the horse into a gallop. Come <laughs> The Lone Ranger hurried into the Bangs' house a short time later. Well, where's the doctor and the other two men? The doctor's got them in the bedroom, fixing them up. The engine's there, too. Good. Bangs, where's your half of the map? I want it. Don't ask me why. I need it at once in order to help you. It's here somewhere, isn't it? I'm not telling. Phil, stop it. Stranger, I trust you. I have it right here in the chimney. I'll get it for you. Here you are. The Lone Ranger had the torn map in his hand only a few seconds when the outside door flew open. Hatton and Fuzzy Willard, guns drawn, stepped inside. <laughs> Beautiful timing, isn't it? Let me have that map. No, no, don't give it to him. You can't have it. I'll die rather than let you take it. Stranger, give Stand me that. Stand back, map. Mrs. Bangs. What? Fuzzy, you grab her. Yeah. I'll take care of this mask, fella. Oh, wait, Hatton. I made you a proposition. You supply Kenny's half. Don't be it... a fool. 
I'm keeping that and taking yours. <laughs> when Kenny started boasting about having his half, he at least could blame it on drink. That's when you killed him? Does it matter to you? No. We killed him later, when we got his story about his partner, Bangs. It was a nice frame-up you worked on, Phil. Could have been better. When we kill you three now, we'll be sure nothing goes wrong. Be sure you kill us first. You see, everything's gone wrong, Hatton. What are you talking Stay about? Stay off that room immediately. Oh. I'll take that gun, Hatton. There. You're not too strong, are you? Me have gun against him, Kimasabi. Uh, Step back, Hatton. Nice shot, Toto. Man with bad arms, start to fire. Me get him. All right, you two, you got me. What's your game? I'll play it now. <laughs> really? How sociable. Hatton, we don't have to ask you where your half of the map is. With Bangs alive, finding the mine will be easy. But I thought you wanted him dead. Like you did when you tried to have him lynched? We weren't going to lynch him. We are going to trade him his freedom for his half of the map. Oh, so that was the idea. We didn't mean to shoot him at Elbow Bend either. We were going to rescue him and propose the same trade. How awful. You killed a man to... Oh, who are these men? Sheriff Daggett and his deputies, Mrs. Bangs. They'll take over. Yes. Hatton, you and Willard didn't know we followed you here, did you? What's happening? You... You say you followed us? Yes, we followed you all the way. Heard the important things you said just now, too. But you heard about... About murdering Jeb Kenny, about framing bangs, about the lynch mob, everything. Ah, you're a bad one, Hatton. You'll hang for this. And I'll be able to thank the mask man for what he's done for me. I can see what he's done to me. Why'd I have to listen to him and... Hey, he's gone. Who is he? He's a one man people like you should never come in contact with, Hatton. Because he's the one man who will save the West by driving you and your kind out. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>